Hallelujah. While we continue in this morning's worship, we'll sing, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there's peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Jesus, 
Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Sing your name, your name is power, your name is healing, your name Strong world shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Sing your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong world. The shadows burn like a fire. Sing your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is light. Break every strong world. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn. Tithes and offerings. We'll sing about the love that God has for us as families in the church. Oh, 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 oh,
years of time shall pass away and the three forms and kingdoms Refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains fall. God's love so sure shall stay there.
Father and God, we thank you this morning for your love, your unending, everlasting, unmatchless love. We thank you, dear God, that even though we are down and out in our sins, you have never left us. Father, we just want to say thank you for your goodness. We thank you, dear God, for this offering that your people have brought into your house. We pray that you will bless it and use it, O oh God, for your kingdom alone. We thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. We will now call on the children to sing Building Up the Temple. Done. 
make us one flame to proclaim your name make us one make us one make us one make us one hope oh, make us one my make us one let your will be done chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 and then we would read chapter 3 14 to 17 could you please stand for the reading of God's word we will read together here beginning Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see thee being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice and I am persuaded that in thee also chapter 3 Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto good, good, all good works. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, as I expound upon your word, I pray, O oh God, that you would grant me godly wisdom to say what you would want me to say so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may be acceptable in your sight O oh Lord my strength and my Redeemer this morning although we read that particular scripture about Timothy I want to bring for a close look at three families three different type of families in fact, as I was pondering on how to begin, I was trying to find a definition for family and I decided not to use one. 
But I want you to think this morning of the family that you are a part of. The theme for this month of June, which is the, dubbed Family Month, says families fulfilling God's purpose. The scripture we read just now has Paul acknowledging that Timothy is not only a third generation Christian, but commended or praised the two women who were responsible for planting the seed of faith in Timothy's life. His grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. They had passed on a legacy of love for Christ that in time helped in the advancing of the kingdom of God. Note carefully, Timothy was a boy whose father, as I read, was Greek. And the Bible scholars say he was possibly a non-believer. His father was not mentioned as being involved in his life. And some Bible scholars feel as if he died when Timothy was young. But Timothy grew to become a follower of Christ and was noticed by Paul on his second missionary journey to Lystra. Timothy's faith, his reputation and character stood out and Paul invited him to travel with him. Paul later referred to him as his son in the faith. He grew to trust Timothy so much that we would go on to read that he eventually gave Timothy the church in Ephesus to pastor. As a result of the teaching of love for and faith in Jesus, passed on by a grandmother and mother, Paul was able to recognize that Timothy's faith was genuine simply because these persons loved him and modeled for him what living for Jesus looked like in a time when there were other options, just like today. There's another family I want us to take a look at. Let's take a look at Joseph's family. Based on the story told in Genesis chapters 37 to 50, and I need to paraphrase this because it's long. Joseph was the son of Jacob and his wife Rachel. He was favored by his father who gave him a special colored coat. Some said a coat of many colors. Jealousy within his brothers especially the sons of Jacob's other wife, had the brothers become evil and jealousy and anger was at an all-time high, especially when Joseph repeated two of his dreams to them, in which he was portrayed as ruling over his brethren. In the first dream, it speaks of gathering wheat in a field and the brother's bundles bowing down to his bundle. In the second dream, Joseph saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down. And we said that, you know, we learned in the dream that it represented his parents and brothers bowing down to him. Tension grew. It was so bad that in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 18, Somewhere amongst the set, you even had premeditated murder. I'm talking about brothers. But also amongst the set, you had that one who did not agree and had his own plan to protect him. So Reuben discouraged them from shedding blood. He was able to avert the murder, but Joseph ended up in a pit. Then Judah, after recognizing 
a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh on their way to Egypt, told his brothers, we have nothing to profit, nothing to gain if we kill him and hide his blood. So let's sell him. Let, let, let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and he is our flesh. And his brethren were content with that. In other words, let's think about it some more. Don't kill him. But we must get something out of it still. And not just get him out of the way. We want to feel the weight in our hands. So we put in a price on his head. His brothers. So Joseph was sold. For a while things looked up for Joseph. He found favor in his master's eyes. He was appointed head over Potiphar's estate. But Potiphar's wife desired to be intimate with him. Joseph refused Potiphar's wife. And then she turned the tables on him. He was sentenced to prison because of Potiphar's wife. She told a lie on him. Look at Potiphar's reaction after all that Joseph had done for him. Family, he sent him to prison. Joseph's personality followed him to prison. He soon became the warden's right-hand man. And he ended up interpreting a dream for the king. In fact, while he was prison, he became second in command. So he went from father's favorite, trials and tribulations, to Potiphar's right hand, trouble nonstop, and then he became the king's second in command after 30 years. Pay attention. While the haters are scheming, God is promoting. While the haters are scheming, God is promoting. Sometimes we look at the problems more than we focus on the problem solver. His story continues. Then came the great family moment. Famine was felt in Canaan. So his brothers had no choice but to go to look for food. And who did they bounce upon? Joseph. But Joseph remained righteous and he helped them. Even after a succession of painful, hurtful, and what could have been moments of anger, Joseph chose to demonstrate love and forgiveness that could only have come from a place of having faith in God. The God that had helped him to maintain his integrity in leadership. Think about it. Let's look at the third family. So that was a family with mother and father and siblings. Let's look at Jesus' earthly family. We are told and we read Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph. However, the scripture tells us that Joseph was not his biological father. Mary was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Matthew 1.18, Luke 1.35 states, Mary was a virgin who conceived for the Holy Spirit. And the scriptures references Jesus had brothers and sisters, cousins, aunts, and uncles. Sometimes we don't go that far. But as I was studying and I was reflecting, the Holy Spirit drew that to me. Sometimes we think that Jesus came and he wasn't a part of a family. He was a part of an earthly family. And obviously there was good reason for God to take that route. For allowing, for coming to earth as a part of family. Because 
family structures are important. These family structures were all different. Think about it. Timothy had grandmother and mother. Joseph had mommy and daddy and brothers. Jesus had a stepfather, uh, what you call him, an adopted father and a biological mother. He had brothers and sisters too. But the thing about all of these families, the roles may change, or the, the names we give the people, but God's expectations does not. We are placed in families to be nurtured and love to affect humanity positively. It is not coincidence that we are all placed in families or we, are, we, are, we come into this world as a part of a family. God did this by design because the structure of family is our platform. In fact, it is created so we could learn how to deal with the rest of the world. Timothy grew up without the influence of a father. But that did not stop his grandmother from instilling and teach his grandmother and mother from instilling and teaching him about the love of God. Joseph shows us that when we focus on pleasing God and relying on him, even if we are faced with troubles and the ill and the wickedness of family members, in fact, the wickedness of people in general, God causes everything to work for our good. Jesus' storyline for the family component is often overlooked. Many people try to discard processing the importance of the adopted father. And sometimes it is the same with our relationships, like a stepmother. And you know, we talk about some people even say, oh, that ain't a real family, that ain't your mother and father, and that kind of stuff. But let's go back to Jesus' story. I, I don't think that them, it was mentioned for it to be left out. It must have some significance. Because what I find quite strange, and I didn't pay much attention to it, is that when the lineage of Jesus is mentioned, it wasn't Mary's side of the family. It wasn't Mary's side of the family that was mentioned. It was Joseph's side. And that particular side had an interesting set of people. But it was Joseph's side of the family that was mentioned. And Joseph was not his biological father. In fact, in Jesus' lineage, a number of women and men were mentioned, associated with all kinds of acts. But that did not stop God from selecting that particular route. Families have issues. I came here to tell you this morning. Families have issues. People become parents under all kinds of different circumstances. Many do not fit what most would consider the ideal family. But God is able to transform us all to be members of families fulfilling God's purpose. Just as God chose to enter into a human family, which must have had its own struggles and love as our own, recognizing challenges, faced or faced challenges, we were all and are all equipped to overcome. We need to recognize that our family structures are often the manuals or the manuscripts we need to help us represent our Father God with excellence and fulfilling His purpose. The experiences we get or go through in our own individual families are the ones that would, the platform, would be the platforms of which we can go about to help humanity. The reality is that if we find it easy to forgive our families for deeds done, but not others, we have no excuse. In fact, while I was studying and reading, and I had to read a couple of times because I'm a bit slow, I recognize that all of the issues 
Timothy's family, Joseph's family, Jesus' family. You think Jesus didn't have issues in his family? As I was reading, I recognized, you remember there's a particular part of the Bible that tells us there were two gentlemen that asked to be on the right side and the left side. Well, the Bible scholars tell me they were Jesus' cousins. And I was like, family, eh? they wanted to use the family connection. I was like, what? So I went, I went and I went and I went and I did the research. I said, okay, Jesus, you had trouble too. That's just something that, I would, that, would have, that was mentioned. And what came to my spirit is that we really have no excuse for the hatred, the animosity, and the hard feeling we go around with, with other individuals, because God gave us family to practice on. In fact, we find it so easy to forgive family members, right? That have done us far worse things than some of our Christian brothers and sisters would ever do us. Sometimes it's just a difference of opinion they have and you can't forgive them. We have children and relatives who have been rude, obnoxious, disrespectful and we forgive them but we write off somebody else's child because we had an unpleasant exchange with the parent or with them or the only time we could advocate for something is if it is directly related to our family or we have self-interest stop and think about that Something definitely has to be wrong with us, or our point, our viewpoint. I hope we recognize that we have all been set up in families. And I use the word set up with dual meaning. One, you have been placed in a particular family by God. And two, you have been positioned for fulfilling God's purpose. He gave us no excuse. Think about it. You could forgive your child, right? And you could forgive your blood brother and sister. But you have difficulty forgiving somebody who's not related to you by blood? That's not acceptable. God set you up and he set me up too. Because if you want good for you and yours, you should want it for others. We have all been given the opportunity to choose whether or not we will be a part of families advanced, advancing God's purpose, or uh, we, we will choose to say, as some may be, that ain't happening. The choice is ours to make. God gave us the platform and families to help us be better, but very often we choose to be worse. Today is another day. We can all have a new beginning. We don't have to continue that way. We have absolutely no excuse for envy, for hatred, for evil intent. Just like how we have the ability to forgive our own, so too can we forgive others. Mark chapter 12 and verse 33 says, And to love him with all your heart, and with all your understanding, and with all the soul, and with all your strengths, and love your neighbor as you love him as you love himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Today I come to you with a hard burden for the way we operate. I want us to stop for a minute and think about how we are dealing with humanity. Yes, we have family members, we have children. But do you wish for other people's children what you wish for your own? We are brothers and sisters. Do you treat other people as you treat your brothers and sisters? We have mothers and fathers. Do you treat other people's mothers and fathers as you treat your own? Or they have to be blood first. They have to be related first to get the preferential treatment. Yes, there are some things that automatically comes out. 
But that's your practice, bro. Are we satisfied with the way we treat each other? The things we say about each other? How we operate in our families? Are our families representing the God we are claiming to serve? Or are we selfish, inconsiderate? Have you stopped recently to see how you're treating other people's children in comparison to yours? In fact, would anybody run to you to rescue them? Would anybody call you to help them or they run away from you? Does anybody trust you? Or is it all about you and your family? God placed us in families. And for a reason. We all have different family makeup. In fact, when I look at my family, and, and, and family is, is, a, is a whole transition. Because you start one way and you end up. When I was growing up, I was growing up with my mother and my grandmother. My mother got married. And so I went to live with my mother and her husband. When I, was, when I left my mother's house, I got a husband and the children. And now I'm ready for the children to go, but they're not going. But listen, I'm recognizing that every step, the step with my grandmother and my mother was just like Lois and Eunice. Because they taught me the word. When, when I went to live with my mother and my stepfather, he cared for me like my father, like a father should. When I got married and I was now a mother to children and other people's children, the world shifted a bit. I had to be now providing guidance and love and nurturing. And now that I'm ready for my children to go, I still have to provide the love and the nurturing because they're not going anywhere. When I look at that and I model what is expected of me in this world as it relates to other people and other people's children and other people's brothers and sisters, do I give them preferential treatment to the point where I am being unfair and not representing God well? Is it any old sort of behavior that should come from us? No. God placed us in families for a reason. So we could learn to nurture, we could learn to love, and it is, that, it is, it is with that same intensity we are supposed to be passing it on. If for any reason... You're passing on venom and animosity and hatred and malice and envy. It is not in line with God's word. Let's go back to Joseph's story. Joseph had a choice, you know. In fact, I think Joseph was a very good Christian. I don't know if I would have been able to stand up like he did when I saw my brothers coming and needing food. I believe I would have had to let them know I remember all that you did to me first before I helped them. But he didn't. You know why? Because his faith in God had worked for him. And he was now in a position to help them. And he wanted to represent God with excellence. Brothers and sisters, today all I have to ask or to tell you or to suggest to you is that taking the high road... You could never, ever be the loser. Sometimes you might feel as if you are getting the worst. But let me tell you, God never, ever leaves you. He comes up and he shows off for you on your behalf. You don't have to indulge in the hatred and the animosity and the pulling down, trying to make others look bad. No. You wouldn't do that for your children. You nurture them and you help them. That is how we are supposed to treat others. God got you. God got you. 
As long as you are desirous of pleasing God, God got you. Just like Joseph, brother said, don't let me dirty hands. You don't have to dirty your hands. People will be people. As I went through these stories, we have the same thing today. If every family got their own Joseph, your own Reuben, your own premeditated murderer, your own person who wants to make you look bad. Every family got them. You could call the name. But the choice is yours. How are you going to represent God? Fix yourself. Our duty today is to fix ourselves so we could be that individual in the family that makes a difference. You don't have to, to give an eye. You don't have to be give vengeance for vengeance. Even when you're tempted to, to cuss, ask the Lord to help you hold your mouth. When you're tempted to retaliate, ask God to allow his Holy Spirit to guide you because when God fights, he don't miss. He's accurate. And he delivers his victory personally. He don't send anybody to tell you this is from God. You know it had to be God on your side. So don't join the gangs. And don't join the ordinary individual who does not want to count on God. We can't make it in our families without God. And when you understand that you have to put God at the center, sometimes you have to suck up some stuff and wait. But that's what he says, wait on me, man. Wait. Be patient and wait. My timing is not your timing. But he, God, do it all things well. Today, I want to leave one message with you. Whatever is going wrong in your family or around you, because we are all our brother's keeper, don't try to go fight it personally. You will lose. You don't know what type of ammunition to pull. God is strategic. You will pull the wrong type of ammunition and shoot yourself, uh, shoot your foot. Turn every situation over to God. He's not only able to help build the family, he's able to fix the things that are wrong, but all he requires is that you fix you. The work that we have to do is to fix us. And it means refocusing. Don't let people distract you. The devil sends a lot of distractions. You have to focus on God and understand that my job is to stay focused. Run like Joseph, run. If you have to run. But when you're running, make sure you're running into the arms of God. Because man can't help you. Jesus and God has all of the all of the answers to all of our family problems no family is perfect not even jesus own was perfect not only his his earthly family wasn't perfect and so don't expect that your family is going to be perfect but god has given you whatever you need to hold fast and represent him with excellence stop being so selfish and think about somebody else's child or somebody else when you're making the decision Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.